Hi, this is Chris from the Ecomod project. Uh, in this demonstration, I'd like to show you how to put site information into EQASCOM. Okay, I've already opened up the EQASCOM setup screen, and as you can see, there's a, a an area where you can enter your uh, site details. Now, this is pretty standard stuff. It's similar to what you will have seen on many other astronomy applications. Uh, basically, you just enter your uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds. Uh, you can enter a fractional part to this if you want. Uh, and the same for longitude. Enter an elevation, and then you just give your site a name, and hit the save button. Uh, now, on earlier versions of EQASCOM, there were actually only uh, two boxes for latitude and longitude, so you could only enter uh, degrees and minutes, and then you'd put a fractional part in the minutes. We've we've now expanded that out, so we've got a second box. It's it's much easier for people. Um, okay, hitting the save button has saved the uh, the coordinates into one of ten slots that we've got. So if you do observe at multiple sites, you can have them all predefined, and simply clicking on them brings the data out for those those sites. Okay, let's I go to an empty one. There's another way in which you can go about this, uh, and that's to use a GPS device. If you if you have a GPS device and it supports the NMEA uh, serial protocol, then you can use EQASCOM to listen to messages that it outputs. Uh, now, NMEA is an industry standard uh, protocol. Uh, many uh, GPS units support it, although on some of them you will have to use their setup program uh, to kind of sw switch the output over to that type of uh, output. Okay, because it's a serial protocol we have to tell EQASCOM uh, which COM port to listen to, uh, to receive the data and also the speed at which it's coming in. Okay. Um, once we've done that, all we have to do is uh, click the Receive Coordinate Time and Data button. And with any luck, uh, we should get some data coming in. Just do that again. There we go. Um, I'm using a, a GPS simulator here, which is why there was a. Uh, it didn't work the first time. I had to um, set the simulator going. These coordinates are aren't mine. Uh, the simulator has, has some some random coordinates put in there, but uh, they illustrate how how a real GPS would work. Um, as you can see, latitude, longitude, elevation time and date have all come in. And uh, the other thing to notice is that I've forced a, a slight offset between the GPS time and the PC time, in this case four seconds. This can happen in real life because uh, perhaps the PC hasn't received a, a time update for some time. Uh, we would assume the GPS would be accurate. Um, so what EQASCOM does is it calculates the difference say about four seconds uh, and it will then apply a correction to any calculations that it does involving time using this uh, time delta. What EQASCOM doesn't do uh, is change your uh, system time. We leave that alone. Uh, if you want to do that you know you can do um, but uh, EQASCOM isn't going to change your, your, your PC's clock. Okay, to get this data into our, our form on the uh, form on the uh, setup form, all we do is hit the accept button, and as you can see, it's moved across. And then I give it another name, hit the save button, and there we go. We've got our our two sites already defined. Okay, the other thing I want to show you is 
I have to open up uh, EQ the simulator, which I already have running. Um, you can see that the there is a site information uh, area on the EQ as common user interface itself. This is identical to the one on the, the, the setup form. You can see we've got the same sites. Uh, the only difference is this set button and essentially whenever you change a uh, a preset or if you manually enter this data or get data from the GPS once you've got new numbers in these boxes just hit the set button and that will ensure that EQASCOM has updated uh, itself to use that new data. Okay that uh, concludes the uh, demonstration.